The story so far. This P51 had the battery connected backwards, which is all too easy to do with these little connectors. And it fried a 3.3 volt regulator, which I replaced on the flight controller. I suggest that you watch the, the first video where I go through that diagnosis. What's happened in the end though is rather odd. It only seems to operate in three channel mode. I was wrong in my initial statements that this controller is only used in the four channel Warbird series and also on the Volantex Sport Cub. Uh, thanks to my friend out there in, uh, in Oz, it reminded me that it's also used in three channel models. The way that it supposedly switches between the two modes is sensing when the aileron servo is connected. It seems a little odd, but that's the way it apparently works. At the moment then, if I put on the transmitter, carefully connect the battery up. Although we see the aileron servo initialize, the aileron appears on the rudder function as it should be, and the elevator is is correct. Throttle works, but the ailerons simply refuse to. Now, as I saw the aileron servo initialize, I thought there couldn't be anything wrong with the signal connection, and indeed I've measured the signal output, and it's generating 1500 milliseconds as it should. In discussion with uh, another guy over in the States, Air Doggy, I suggest that you check out his channel, there'll be links down in the description to that. He's convinced me to revisit the connection for the aileron. I've already, as I said, checked the output with a PWM tester and that's fine. I've also tried another servo and that's fine. However, could there still be a problem with the signal wire? Clearly, as I've changed the servo, it's not at the servo end, maybe it's on the board. One clue could be that when trying to remove the aileron connector, it was very, very firmly attached, shall we say, and I ended up pulling the housing off of the board along with the connector. Could I have possibly damaged something? Time then to get the microscope back out and have a much closer look. Here we can see the pins on the board after I've resoldered them. I did intend to take some pictures and footage of me repairing this joint, but uh, for some reason that hasn't happened. This is the signal pin, and what I found was that when I'd pulled the housing off, this pin, the solder joint, was broken here. There's no connection on the other side. The signal wire goes from here directly, I guess, to the microprocessor. So I've redone that joint now, that's nice and solid, and just checked the other two as well, being the positive and the ground. Let's now then connect back up the servo and see if that has cured the problem. Moment of truth once again then, I've connected the aileron servo back up. Let's put our transmitter on. Battery connection. Nope, still in channel 3 mode. So the aerons are not moving at all. Uh, what do now, as they say? Well, I am still following in the steps of my guru, Air Doggy, over there in the States. He is convinced it's to do with the signal wire or the servo. Let's disconnect the battery a moment. Take this servo off, not forgetting that, of course, the servos were connected backwards as well for a time, probably longer than the microprocessor. The regulator would have blown pretty much instantly, but the servos would have been connected for however long the guy had it connected for backwards. I have no idea. Enter then a new servo. Let's get this right way round. Signal wire to the top. Reconnected now. Oh, 
Well, place your bets. Oh, hey, progress. It is now in the fourth channel mode. Ailerons, as it should be, elevator, and rudder. Yay! Go, air doggy, go! Whatever the problem with this servo is, it is very strange. Let's just try something else a moment. Without powering it off. I don't suggest you try this at home. Make sure that servo is the right way around. Well, what do you make of that? The servo is clearly working, but whatever magic happens when it powers up to sense that the servo is there, I can only guess that the microprocessor pin that it's connected to is obviously an I.O. an input-output pin, and at some time when it wakes up, the microprocessor senses something on that pin. Clearly for the servo, it's only ever going to be an, an input, so who knows what it's actually trying to sense. But whatever it is trying to sense is not working for us. Let's just unplug again. Transmitter off. Transmitter on. And back to three channel mode. The answer then will be to swap this servo out for a replacement. This is a very similar size. Just for the avoidance of doubt, one more time. Once more onto the breach and all that. And once more, yes, we're back into four channel operation. Go for broke. We can see that the servo clearly works. It just isn't detected on power up. Go figure. Well, there we have it. It only remains for me to swap the servo over and the owner can get his model back a long time before the slow boat from China, which is bringing the replacement unit. I'm sure I'll find a use for that. Many, many, many thanks then to the contributors to this story down there in Australia, the Aussie tree crasher. Thanks for your input. And most valuable of all, over there in the States, Air Doggy. I'm here in Europe, and this is a great example of international collaboration in these uh, dark times, and what the internet should be all about. Happy New Year!